Hey Siri. Help me find those missing folders and photos in Lightroom. Lightroom has an added support for that with Siri. Siri's not going to be any help with this. Why don't I help you find those missing folders and photos in Lightroom? Today in the Lightroom Whisperer. Let's get right to it. If you've changed the name of anything or you've moved anything outside of Lightroom, it's not going to know what's going on and you're going to end up seeing question marks and exclamation points. This is just signifying that Lightroom doesn't know where the heck these things are. It has a memory, it's catalog, and it remembers it in one place and if you move it without Lightroom officiating that move, it doesn't know where that new address is. So essentially you just have to tell Lightroom where the new location is. So I'm going to show you kind of one of the most common things people encounter in Lightroom that they end up having issues with. I'm going to go over and I'm going to open up my cheapest chicken drive. This is my travel drive. When I'm on the road, I use this to import all of my pictures. And then when I get home, I usually use Lightroom to transfer those pictures. If you haven't seen my episodes on folders or on how the catalog works, I would suggest going and watching those. It'll definitely help considerably with your Lightroom experience. In this case, if we see the cheapest chicken drive up there and I open Lightroom back up again, you can see that it recognizes there's a 2020 folder. And it recognizes that from February 26th, there's some images that I've imported. Now, if I was to just open my Genius Drive, the one that contains my 2020 folder, and I was to just drag this right down into 2020, Lightroom would be able to move that folder for me from the travel drive to where it lives, what I call my working drives, the ones that I keep at home. And it would be able to remember all of the steps in that, and you wouldn't end up with errors. Now, in this case, I'm going to go and minimize Lightroom again. Open up that cheapest chicken drive and you can see when I open my Lightroom file, there's 2020 and there's my 226 folder. Now, if I open my Genius Drive, this is where I want it to live permanently. I can also see that in my Lightroom Imports folder here, there's a 2020 folder. And what a lot of people will often do is they'll just drag this from one location to the other right on their desktop. Now that's great. It'll move the file folder from one place to another, but the problem is Lightroom's catalog, its memory, thinks it's on the cheapest chicken drive still. So when we go back to cheapest chicken here, even though I've ejected it, it would be the same thing if it wasn't ejected. You notice cheapest chicken's grayed out because I've unplugged that drive. If I actually go and I hover over the question mark on that little folder, it's gonna show me that it's missing. Now, whether this is how you got to this point or not isn't relevant. If you see these indicators, though, that you're missing files, this will be the way that you're going to find them regardless. Now, if I actually go and I click on that folder that's missing, you can see, too, that the pictures have a little exclamation point on them. That means that they're missing. And if I hover over that, you can see that it's telling me that. Now, if I was to click on this little guy, it shows me the name of the file. This is the name that the camera assigned to it when I took it. Since this is what it's looking for, if I copy the name of that, hit locate. Now, if I tell it to look on my genius drive and I tell it to search out that name, I'm just going to paste it up there, click genius drive. It finds that for me. Now, if I click the file and click select, and it actually took all of those pictures and you notice that it's zero here now under the cheapest chicken drive. And if I move to my genius drive, open my 2020 folder up, you'll notice now that I have my 226 folder, all seven pictures are identified. It knows that this is where I've moved them to. It's not duplicating these. It sees that I've moved them. I told them to locate it and it's done that for me. Now I could have also done it in a different way. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can click on the folder I can hit find missing folder and I can do the same steps this way. Now, after I've done the transfer, I can actually go into my cheapest chicken drive here and I can right click on it. I can say remove and then you're going to see that it disappears. It actually takes away the cheapest chicken drive because that was the last folder that the catalog Lightroom's memory remembered on that drive. And because it's pretty much useless to Lightroom right now until I import something else to it, why show it to me? So at this point, I can see my Macintosh hard drive, and then I can also see my Genius drive and my G-Unit drive, my two working drives. 
That's about it when it comes to missing folders and missing files. It's pretty simple to do. You just need to kind of know where they are. If you were to copy and paste the name of that, bring it into the little search bar, and then look for that name, it's going to be able to find it for you, and then you can link with Lightroom where everything is and where it lives. This is, though, the most common thing that I have to work with people with when I'm dealing with them in a one-on-one -on -one basis in Lightroom. It's really common for people to move these just because it's second nature for them outside of Lightroom, but since this is file management software, it needs to officiate that transfer. If you don't move that in the program, it doesn't know its new address, and you have to then tell it where it's moved. As long as you keep to Lightroom for officiating all of those transfers, you'll never see those question marks and you'll never see those exclamation points and you'll enjoy your Lightroom experience a lot more. From the Lightroom Whisperer, keep on Lightrooming!